feel a similar excitement now as we embark on our next figure in five minutes on the Gedolim as we begin to understand and learn about of Zalman Sarotskin. The feeling I have, which is similar is to that which we had when we discovered Remichol Forschleger. Remichol, we learn, was a Gaon of the greatest proportions, a piece of Sachachav in Baltimore, and someone who was largely forgotten, a hidden giant in the Torah world. And in a similar, but in a certain more painful way, Reb Zalman Sarotskin is not well known. And the pity is, besides being such a great Gaon, and such a great Rav, as we'll learn about, a Rav Yisrael, he was someone who was most inevitable for the Tzibur in an incredible way. So the fact that he certainly is more well-known than a Rumichol, but one feels he doesn't get the, the recognition, the mention, the, the remembrance that he deserves. So I'm very excited to learn about him and engage in his life a little bit to try to correct a historical uh, mistake. Nobody's fault, but, but it's a shame when things like this happen. Chinuch Atzmoi, Vad HaYeshivos, acting so strongly for all the Tzibur of B'nai Torah Halita in the Litvish Yeshiva world, and really for all Klai Yisrael as we'll learn. He was born in White Russia in 1880, and he died in Yerushalayim in 1966. And it's hard to believe how much he packed in, as we'll see, in his 86 years, before World War One, before, excuse me, World War I, between the wars, during the war, World War II, escaping, coming to Yerushalayim, helping found the fledgling yeshiva community here. Brilliance, Mesiris Nefesh, giving of himself to a level rarely seen. The ability to sharply defend Torah positions, yet be peace-loving and respected by those to the left of him and those to the right. Famous eloquence, both on the spoken word and in the written word. The central st- street in what's called the Bible Belt, in Yushalayim, Rehob Sarotkin, of course, is named after him, and some of the greatest lights in the yeshiva world in the recent past are from his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, people like Rehob Baruch Sarotkin, Reliezer Sarotkin, Reb Yitzhak Sarotkin, his son, of the Rashiva in Tells Cleveland, and very famous figures like his great-grandchildren, Reb Shalom Ber Sarotkin, who's one of the great um, Marbitze Torah today, many... Uh, yeshivot and kolim and yeshiva ketanas. I'm sure someone listening probably has a child in one of his yeshivas. He was a great grandson. Uh, Rebetzin Rina Tarshish, one of the most famous female speakers, is a great granddaughter of his. And it's not just Torah and yeshivas, it's in the Kirov world. Of course, Yad Lachim was uh, his great grandchildren. Eliezer Sarotskin, I believe, is is continuing that, and, and as we'll see, that ruach of Kirov, not just Torah in the classical uh, yeshiva setting, but being involved in Kirov, which was something which was very, very close to his heart. From a young age, he saw the need to reach out to all types of Jews and to makarov them, lavinu shavah He wrote amazing works, like Aznaim la Torah, his monumental, best-known work on Hamisha Chum Torah, which is, is, in fact, quoted, he wrote Mosnaim Latar, which were Chuvas, you see his koach, his responsa, written responsa. And over the next few months, I'm very excited to scratch and reveal uh, some of his greatness. And again, it's a great pleasure, especially that we can bring to the fourfold a little bit to the front center, someone who so much deserves to be right there. Mm-hmm.